Hi and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you three licks that I think every country guitar player should know. These licks are the classic go-to standard country licks. These are licks that players like me use and rely on every day. I'll play them as is. Sometimes I'll just use them as a template and add variations to them. And sometimes I'll look at the concept behind the lick and I'll use that to inspire a bunch of new ideas. These three licks are gonna have us covering steel guitar bends. We're gonna be learning how to superimpose subdominance. This is a really common harmonic move that happens all over country music. And we're gonna be learning a double stop lick out of a basic chord shape. This is a double stop lick that players like Danny Gatton and Jerry Reed use all the time as a template for building some of their most iconic licks. All right, before we get started, you're gonna to wanna to grab the notation tab and backing track for this video so you could follow along. Also, if you get to the end of this video and you wanna learn more of these go-to standard country guitar licks, take advantage of that discount link down below to my course, 20 Must Know Country Guitar Licks. And as always, the best way to show support to this channel is to hit the subscribe button. It's a little thing on your end, but it really does help me out a ton in building this channel. Okay, our first lick is in the key of G. It's a steel guitar lick. I'm gonna play it for you and then I'll break it down and tell you why I think it's an important one to know. All right, let's learn this thing. So it starts on the upbeat of one and really my target note is the fifth of G, which is a D. And what I'm doing before I get to that five is I'm approaching it from a half step underneath. So this is my chord tone and this is a half step approach. And I'm gonna slide because I'm imitating a steel guitar. So anytime I could slide or bend and get more of a legato connection between notes, it's gonna get me even closer into that world. So I start by sliding from flat five to five, up to the six, seven is gonna slide into the root, and then I have uh, two root, and then I'm gonna place my pinky here on the fifth, put my fingers in front, kind of support this bend. And while that fifth is ringing this D on top here, I'm gonna bend the two up to the three. So. So two, three, four, one. Now the trick is when you play that note with your pinky and you go in for that bend that you don't accidentally touch the string, you want that D to keep ringing in to this bend. So you end up with it sounding with that B and D here. So you get the third and fifth. And if you're a cage person, I'm kind of visualizing a C-shaped G chord here, and I'm really connecting a C-shaped G chord to an A-shaped G chord. Doing that with a bend. Moving that down to the next string set, because we could also do it there and get a good bend happening. It's pretty easy for us to do. I'm gonna come up here out of a G-shape G chord. Here's my five at the 12th fret. I'm gonna approach that from a half step underneath. Walking up the scale, six, seven sliding into root, two to root. Grab the fifth with the pinky, set up the bend, and bend into the three there. So that's how you do that lick on two different string sets, exact same written pitches. Uh, the only difference is the timbre because we're playing on wound strings and thicker strings on the other string set, so it's gonna sound a little bit different. But the nice thing is, is it gives us two places on the fretboard to play this lick. Okay, why did I pick this lick? For one, it's a great sounding lick. It's a standard steel lick. But there's other things about this lick that really inspire the rest of my guitar playing. One is that this lick doesn't start right on the downbeat. It doesn't start on the measure. It starts before on an upbeat and it pulls you into the resolve. 
So it's pulling us into the downbeat of that chord, not starting right on top of the chord. So this line has forward momentum to it. It's creating this tension, and then by the time I get to either the downbeat or if I'm leading into a new chord with this lick, it's putting more weight on the resolve of that chord, which is gonna be more satisfying to listen to. And that's really inspiring to me. So as a player, steel players are really great at this. As a player, I look at that and that makes me more conscientious about playing lines or melodies or licks or solos that pull a listener forward all the time, pulling you into a chord change, into a downbeat, rather than playing right on top of a measure and kind of having a boxy sound. Okay, lick number two in the key of G, and we're gonna be superimposing a subdominant over this G vamp. I'm gonna explain that after the lick, but first let me play this lick for you and break it down, and then we'll talk about what superimposing means, and we'll talk about what a subdominant is. Let's break this down. So I'm starting by sliding into a third of a first inversion C major triad on the D, G, and B strings. Doing that with the pick, playing the five with the pick, playing the root with the middle finger, coming back to the third with the pick, and then I'm gonna go on to a second inversion G major triad, but I'm only gonna grab the G and B string with the ring and middle finger. So that's outlining a C major triad into a G major triad. I'm gonna do that same exact thing, but I'm gonna bounce down here to some lower inversions. So root position C is gonna lead into a first inversion C, approaching that root from a half step underneath. Nothing's changing in the right hand, still the same. I'm gonna drop it down again to a second inversion C major triad, going into a root position G major triad. Half step approach to the five. So again, C to G, C to G, C to G. So that progression of going from C to G in the key of G is a really powerful cadence in music. There's a really strong pull between the C chord and the G chord in the key of G. That's your four chord to your one chord. Or another way to say it is your subdominant to your tonic chord. This relationship is like the second most powerful pull in music. There's a name for this cadence going back and forth between these two chords. It's called a plagal cadence. Um, people also call it the amen cadence. Uh, very, very powerful sound to do. And this particular move is super common in country music. It happens everywhere. Let me talk about what superimposing means here. I'm just playing over a track in G. There's no C chord in it, but I'm superimposing the C chord. So there's a tension that happens when the track is in G, but I'm playing a C chord over it. There's a tension there, and then I'm resolving down to G. So another way you could look at it and why it's effective is you're getting this tension release, tension release. You know, tension release, tension release, tension release. That happens everywhere. Piano players do it, steel players do it, guitar players do it, fiddle players do it. You could do it as a chordal thing. You could kind of use it as a template and build lines off of, but it's a very, very powerful sound and super common in country music. All right, lick number three. Man, every country player under the sun has either played this lick or some variation of this lick. We're doing this in the key of G. It's a double stop lick. We're gonna be doing this out of an E-shaped G chord. Let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna be just pretty much living on the top four strings for this one. We're using some hybrid picking. We're using the top of that E-shape G chord. I'm gonna be using some half-step approaches to the three. I'm also gonna be superimposing a subdominant. Here's another example 
of that being used. So let's check it out. I'm starting by playing the root, and then I'm coming up to grab the fifth and the root, and I'm doing it with my middle and ring finger, really trying to pop those strings. Coming back to the root, and here's where we're superimposing that subdominant. I'm gonna be hyperextending the finger and grabbing the G and B string. When I do that, I'm making a second inversion C triad. That's your four chord in the key of G. There I am superimposing that subdominant. And it's about to resolve. So root, fifth and root, root again, grabbing the C and E or the G and B string with my fingers here of that second inversion C major triad, back to the G, and then I'm gonna drop back here with the index finger covering the B flat and the D, that's the flat three and the five. Grabbing those with the middle and ring. While that's ringing, I'm gonna hammer on from the flat three to the three. And then resolve on the root. Now that lick has been used as a template by so many of our favorite guitarists. Either playing it as is or adding variations to it to kind of make it their own. Jerry Reed's take on that lick might be something like this. Danny Gatton's take on that lick might be something like this. You could see that it's all coming from the same place, so it's all coming from the same shape. There's a lot of similarities in there. There's always half-step approach to the three. There's always that superimposing of the subdominant. So just adding in some repetition, some different color notes, you can make this like your own. But it starts with that basic template. Now if you want to continue down this path and keep learning more of these go-to country guitar licks and learning why they're important, take advantage of that discount link down below and go grab that course, 20 Must Know Country Guitar Licks. If you want to practice these licks that I've showed you, play along with the backing track, go grab the free notation tab and backing track down below. And as always, if you want to show support to this channel, the best way to do that is just to hit the subscribe button, little thing on your end, but it helps me a ton in growing this channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in another video.